morning, uh, everyone. Our uh, United Speaker from abroad and also our colleagues from Taiwan, students and postdocs. Welcome everyone and good morning. Uh, this is an annual uh, VU meeting. Uh, fourth time, I think. Yeah. It started uh, in 2015. It's an annual meeting on, we have two meeting like this each year. One on particle physics, phenomenology, cosmology, and string theory, which is this one. And the other one on condensed matter uh, physics, which will take place in January this year. So, um, yeah, the goal of this meeting is to bring together uh, experts from our board to speak about frontier of our research and also uh, to act as a platform to bring uh, local people to, together uh, to uh, exchange ideas and uh, see each other. So the idea actually came from uh, uh, the time when I was in Durham. They have an annual meeting for uh, over 30 years already. And uh, my colleague, uh, Valia, yeah, so we have organized a few meetings together in Durham. It's a great uh, pleasure to have him here today. So uh, without further ado, uh, let me introduce our first speaker today. Uh, it's uh, Takashi Miyagi uh, from YITP. Uh, he has been working on entanglement entropy and ADS-CFT for uh, for quite a while, and he has a lot of results to tell us today. Yeah. Let's welcome. So first, I'd like to start. So now I'm the other organizers for kind of education to this very interesting workshop and conference. So here, today I'd like to talk about uh, something called entanglement of purification, which is a kind of generalization of quantity uh, called entanglement entropy, which is a good measure of quantum entanglement of your state, but what about mixed state? Then it's a good quantity is called entanglement purification, which measures nice correlation, which happens for bipartite two-body systems, A and B. And uh, I'd like to talk about some programming version of this quantity, and which is first proposed uh, my paper with the graduate student of Emoto, which is here, and also independently by Brian Swing and the collaborators. And also I'd like to report our latest uh, result that we can somehow derive this quantity, programming quantity, from CFP calculations. So let me begin with the introduction. So, and the ADCFT is a study for a long time, more than 20 years. And they showed a very uh, conceptual issue of what's happening in gravity dynamics if we try to understand its movement, its dynamics from very microscopic viewpoint. So there we find some ADCFT gives some geometrization of dynamics uh, in conformal uh, view series. So you see, conformal view series originally very microscopic quantum theory, but if we look at Conformal view theory, geometrical viewpoint, especially through the language of quantum entanglement, we see some dynamics of gravity. In other words, gravity can be regarded as some uh, quantum dynamics of conformal view series. And this geometrization comes from this entanglement, and the reason is, one reason for this is that you can see some quantum entanglement in conformal view series. It's some kind of geometry, variable geometry, which is realized in ADS space, in ADS safety correspondence, and we can see explicitly one connection by through the uh, computation of entanglement entropy. So if we compute entanglement entropy, which is a, a good measure of entanglement, at the same time, this largely measures the amount of information included in the particular region. So that we decompose a uh, uh, space in co uh, conformal view theory or quantum view theory into two parts, A and B, bipartite. The composition is region A and the other part is region B. Then there are some quantum entanglement between this region A and other parts. And the amount of this quantum entanglement correlation is measured by Neumann entropy. So rho, rho minus rho of rho is a standard Neumann entropy. If rho is a standard canonical ensemble, you get just get a summer entropy, entropy. But here we are talking about something called reduced density matrix, which means that we press out the other parts, region B, and just focus on the information in group A. So this is a low way. So we lose some information because we're pressing out the uh, other parts. So this is a kind of, this has a, some ambiguity of information, so that is measured by So on that map, this means a hidden like, number of hidden microstates. Micro and this, in the area safety, we can compute this quantity as an area. This is a, just a geometrical quantity, but especially so which this area is some surface, which we call gamma A which is a minimal area surface which ends on the boundary of A. So minimal 
condition is, I mean, select the surface in the valve. So valve area is interpreted as a complement. So this is a, a one manifestation, the connection between valve geometry and uh, dynamics of CFT. So we can geometrize some very algebraic uh, quantum dynamics into some area. And uh, one application of this, which actually becomes a, a very useful in later part of my talk, is, uh, for example, the derivation of something called strong subrelativity. This is a very quick proof. And strong subrelativity is one of the most fundamental inequality known in quantum information theory, just be put this way. So the SAB means, so previously I talked about the space A, some entanglement entropy for region A, but we can talk also entanglement entropy for region A union B. This is A union B. And we take a process SDC, and this is always <coughs> greater than this combination. So this is very fundamental inequality, just come from unitarity of quantum variable system. This is true for any quantum system, not necessarily CFT. But this inequality is actually can be easily interpreted in a very geometrical way. So AB, as I just explained, so AB is related to this surface, this gamma, some gamma AB, some minimal surface, and we just sum of this to surface area, then we get this AB. And this, but we can recombine this to surface into this like, green part and this brown part. This is still a, sum of the area is same, but this, you, you see some cusp, so there are much better surface, which really just cover region B or A, B, C. So this is a minimal surface, and obviously this inequality holds. And in similar way, there are another one of, another inequality of course, strong surface, that we can very easily prove using some different recombinations. But in that way, so algebraic relations in quantum information theory now are uh, replaced with geom just simple geometrical property. This is a power of ADCFT. But we can even go further, and this is something called monogamy of mutual information, first formed by this Aiden Hedrick Marlin. And uh, so for this, this is a little sophisticated version of this kind of inequalities, but this is no longer true for any generic quantum system that doesn't satisfy this inequality, but only if we think about holographic CFT, which is just given by classical gravity limit of ADCFT, so easy to prove. So, for this, uh, we can also introduce something called mutual information, IAB, which is made as also some correlation between two <coughs> systems, A and B. This is just being a combination of entanglement entropy. So using this kind of very elementary geometrical uh, argument, we can prove this inequality. Or you can see this, in terms of entanglement entropy, are seven terms, plus and minus, and this combination is always negative. But this is, as I mentioned, this is not always true for any quantum system, but for exception for free theory, free mass, for the massive free theory of CFT, it is known this is violated. But this is, property is very characteristic to holographic CFT, so it may be useful to understand holographic CFTs. So, uh, yes? I want to explain if we Bosonic massive theory. Probably, I think, yes. It's mm. But there are some issues of zero mode for boson. Mm. So that might be something to change the computer. And uh, so in this talk, I'd like to, because these are uh, all about entanglement entropy, and this is a good measure for pure state, but no longer good measure of entanglement for mixed state. Uh, so what about mixed state? And uh, so I'd like to focus on the quantity called the entanglement purification and holographic part, holographic entanglement purification. And first I will explain this conjecture and later I will give some, uh, some evidences by using inequalities, but also finally we would like to report our latest result by uh, confirming this uh, correspondence in explicit calculations. But this is related to also ambitious score. This is a a little bit far from what we discussed here today. But uh, one ambitious goal is to understand radius safety, generalization of radius safety, such that some dual theory lives on the fi finite cutoff surface. So usually radius safety, dual CFT lives on the real boundary, uh, asymptotic about radius region, which means ultra violent uh, theory. But uh, we can squeeze this boundary surface toward the bar, but what, what's the interpretation of this finite cutoff surface in terms of dual theory? 
And uh, so there are one uh, idea which we worked out. This is called something we call surface state correspondence, mainly uh, uh, motivated by tensor network connection, which I don't have time to talk, but there are interesting conjectures that they say P is interpreted as something called tensor networks. But uh, so this is actually the original motivation why we propose this connection of this holographic counterpart of entanglement purification. And so that way, so, and this is really like uh, one, one direction how to extend the ADS safety or so that dual cell is on the couple of service. So this is easily integrated. So this contents of my talk, I just finished the introduction. I want to explain the recent progress of the entanglement wedge. And using this idea, we define holographic entanglement purification. And before that, I will explain this quantity. And finally, we give the latest progress. <coughs> so this, let me start with the environment today. So this is a, a basically answer to this question, basic question, which bulk region is, to, is dual to a given region in A in conformal theory. So the conformal theory in standard initiative lives on the boundary. And so we can talk about region A, and the other part maybe we can go B, it's complement. But uh, so some, so CFP is lives on all space, but we can restrict state so uh, reduce the energy matrix, for example, which lives on this region A. So this is the inclusive information which lives on A. So which region? But this question is that this is a CFP language, but in, in the ADCFP we have some bulk language. So this region should correspond to some region in the bulk. So which region exactly correspond to? So this is called the entanglement wedge. And the uh, answer is like the answer is very simple. So we take uh, this region A and we, we consider the boundary of A. And we take a minimal service which covers region you know, A so that we can compute entanglement entropy. But forget about the entanglement entropy. So just to pick up this minimal service and just talk about the region which is surrounded by this minimal service and this region. So this is, we, we call this MA. And the entanglement which is this region. And the claim is that information of A is related to the bulk region called entanglement which this region. So there are many, many blocks in this direction. So we can reconstruct. Uh, information in the bulk from this information in the and that way. So there are one to one correspondence for information for low energy universe space. And there are many, many progresses. So we are going to use this idea. And uh, so this is uh, just uh, here I took uh, some time slice. So this is uh, like just I said it's my and this is time slice t equals zero slice. But we, uh, actually in a more precise definition of entanglement we have to include time duration. So previous picture I just talked about time slot here. And for that, actually, entanglement is more precisely defined by the domain of dependence of this region MA, which I just mentioned, this spatial region. So this is kind of like a form region. So this is a more precise definition of entanglement. But our argument today is only uh, always a static state. So uh, and we don't care about these time limitations. But also, we can think about some time dependent case, but that doesn't change the story so much. Okay, so that let me give a simple example of entanglement wedge, but this is not highly a non trivial one, but simplest example. So we talk about region A. Only if we talk about region A, so the entanglement wedge is correspond to this red region, which I just mentioned. But uh, we now combine this region A with region B. So we talk about just the A union B. So and talk about the reduced tension matrix row A B. And this row A B is dual to this region, which covers by minimal surface A B. But there are two choices. So one choice is like this, another choice is like this. So this surface is just connect the boundary point of A with boundary point of B. So this is another candidate for minimal surface correspond to A B. Gamma A B is one choice of gamma A B, there's another choice of gamma A B. And the rule is that always we have to take a minimum one. So if this is this language is shorter, then we should pick up this one. And especially that happens when size of A and B is very large. Then this is a dominant one. This is a dominant one. So that case, they are connected. Entanglement which is connected. And then what happens? So then one good uh, geometry quantity which characterizes this combined, this connected entanglement which is just cross-section, minimum cross-section. This is obvious to us. Anyway. So this is a characteristic <coughs> geometry quantity. So that why not we should we consider some dual CFT minimum. So this is sigma AB, which is a cross-section, and this is a minimal surface, which divides MAB entanglement into A side and B side. And so we, are, we would like to focus on this quantity. 
And then it is very natural to define this quantity. So this area of this cross section divided by 4G Newton. As some interesting, maybe this is hopefully this has some interesting quantum information theoretical interpretation. This is the entanglement wedge cross section. We call this entanglement wedge cross section to just cross section. And we would like to understand the programming dual meaning of this quantity. <coughs> and then we come to our conjecture, also independently by these people. And uh, so this is just simple conjecture. This entanglement wedge cross section is just equal to uh, in quantum information spectral quantity called entanglement replication. I, I will give the definition of this quantity later. Just later. So this is a part introduced by these people called this gear probably. And uh, this conjecture is not so strange and if we think about pure stages, just reduced to standard entanglement. So this cross section obviously just reduced to the just obviously reduced to this minimum surface area, which is just to minimum entanglement. And also this quantity is also just reduced to entanglement. So this is only non-trivial for mixed states. And then we come to uh, definition of entanglement application, uh, maybe short, uh, short we just for EOP. So for that we just uh, do some purification as for you know, have some summary about the purification, but this is very elemental procedure. So we just talk about the general mixed state. We can diagonal basis in this way. The low C is just general mixed state, the H matrix, and we can add some extractive bus space and such that we can purify. We can describe it as a pure state, just wave function, single wave function. Like this all this will be if we press out this the other part P, we get just the up to original mixed state. And, uh, so this is a purification, but the issue is that so there are infinitely many different ways to perform this purification. The reason is that we have to choose a basis here. So it is not even like I, but what this means. So there are infinitely different choices. In other words, we can act unitary operation on this side and change many different, infinitely many different types of purifications. So the, the reason why we are interested in purification, so on normal entropy is good to measure the entanglement only for pure state. So if we can relate mixed state to pure state, then we can use on normal entropy to characterize quantum entanglement. So this is a, a definition of EOP. <coughs> so we consider all purification, all possible purifications, which are related to A. Originally, we started low AB. We are inter interested in a two-body system. Uh, I mean, so bipartite system A and B, and this is generically mixed state, okay, but we have extra fibrous space A tilde and B tilde, and so the total state is given by pure state. But as already mentioned, there are infinitely many different kinds of purifications we can do. So we take a minimum of all possible purifications. So we compute the entanglement to be for region A, A tilde. So of course, choice of A tilde is uh, uh, also obligatory. So this is the extra space, extra fiber space we add to for purification, but we can also decompose into a tilde and tilde. So this choice is also, you can choose. And uh, we have to take all possible such choices and about this entanglement. So it's a tilde. So this is a good quantity because it's pure state. Anyway. But I mean, it's a huge ambiguity. So then anyway, so this is the definition of EOP, entanglement of purification, and it's basic properties like this. If this is zero, it's just say it's a, a, a direct polar state. And uh, that sense, actually, this quantity is not a good measure of entanglement, but this is a good measure of correlation. Entanglement entropy is uh, even not a good measure of correlation for mixed state, because they say it's not equal to SPK. But this is a, just a, so we can think about more refinement of this definition. So quantity so called squashed entanglement or entanglement formation so that it really measures amount of entanglement. But that such a quantity is more complicated. So this first step to understand real quantum entanglement for mixed state. So that's why we price that quantity. And this uh, I list it just property of this EOP. It's like this. So it's always bounded by entanglement entropy. And this pure set is saturated. And in more interesting it is always bounded by the mutual information, which I mentioned before. Half of mutual information is always greater than this, and similar in quality. And if you ask it, we have this. It's a polygon, uh, polygon is rather than opposite, but uh, 
this is a characteristic property for UV, and this extensive if we get larger scales, then we, of course this value should increase. So these, but these are all actually followed from strong subjectivity for which I just first gave you. So these are properties. So first thing, if we want to claim that this inequality, so first thing we should do is to confirm this inequality. So this is the thing I, I want to do here. So, so let's test this conjecture. And the first one is obvious because this is a, a gamma, this is a real entanglement entropy, but this is definitely this is smaller. This area is small because this is UV divergent, but this is not just finite. So in general, this EOP is finite cost, as opposed to entanglement. And uh, another thing is just if you talk about pure state, it just points at sigma AB points at gamma A, so we just get uh, this one. And more non trivially, we can think about a uh, proof of this guy. You see, this uh, inequality also uh, discussed in the context of B2 set uh, by Hedrick Friedman uh, a few years ago. But uh, we can prove this in a very uh, geometrical way. So this is a gamma A, is a standard minimal service, but obviously this service area is uh, smaller than the combination of this three, right? This guy and this guy and this guy. Obviously, just triangle inequality. So we just write it here, the opposite side also I write it here, and just sum over this. And then a uh, major information appears here, here, and this is a this with cross section appears. So this is, we can very easily see this. And uh, so this kind of, Inequality. So the other one, which is uh, some three body, three body part, a three part type system. But this is actually come from monogamy mutual information. Very easy. Because if this is true, so then this is bounded by sum of two. So this is already true. And uh, this polygamy relation is also can be easily seen from this picture. This red guy is larger than this sum of this green guy and blue guy. So this is automatically follows. And the final one is that extensivity just come from the property of entanglement which we, we, we talk about entanglement which for larger areas, then it is well known that the entanglement which also expands morphological increase. So this is the entanglement nesting property I'm not going to do. And there are one bonus for this kind of consideration. We can prove uh, something equality which is uh, not true in general. So this is a strong super additivity. So this is much like monogamy or mutual information, which uh, just introduced. So this is only true for, I think this is only true for holographic safety. And this inequality is like given by this. This inequality. So this, uh, when we get compose A, E, we have A, B, but uh, we find grain A into A and A tilde, B and B tilde, they compose this way. Then this is bounded by this, some of this two. This is obvious from this picture. So the, this guy is just this bit line, but we can, Cut this point and little squeeze area side, then we get the other side. So this is also true, but this is only specific to holographic safety. And we can talk about also explicit examples. I will come up with this later, but uh, uh, so I just made a few examples. So for double interval, this is region A and this is region B, then entanglement to which cross section is a minimal service, so the entanglement cross section is here. So we can have an analytical form. In terms of cross ratio of these four points. And it's like this. It shows a uh, phase transition behavior. This red one is a mutual information. And uh, below this, uh, it's a, there are a uh, far apart, so the entanglement rate is disconnected. So the mutual information is zero. But it's suddenly going back. And, and mutual information is a continuous function. So derivative jumps, but the uh, entanglement rate cross section is just really this continuous function, suddenly going up. And, uh, uh, it works. But it's always greater than this half of the mutual information as I mentioned. Now, so the, and this is one example. Another example is a finite temperature example. This is a BTZ. So then, for example, if you have a big rock, uh, some rock force here, this is a boundary CFT, so region A is half and region B is half, then minimal wage cross section just this length between boundary point and just the horizon. And it does the important thing is the graph for entropy does not contribute. So that part is <laughs> You see, if we talk about the entanglement entropy for region B, it's really lacks on the horizon. And extensive contribution is there. But here we cut it out. So it's a, a because we are only care about uh, some nice correlation. And because of this issue, so this uh, is in, in, in general different from this equal complement because here we, we don't have that. But anyway, we have simple form. Huh? 
and I would also show this field branch of this one. <coughs> and so that, but we have to be very careful about the connection. So this is a very rough conjecture. And the uh, original definition of EOP has a minimization. And this minimization is very tricky. And we have to specify what kind of state we have to get minimization. So we have to first specify that. But there are several possibilities. So one is uh, just original EOP with just all quantum state. But this is very difficult to do it in holography because in holography, only particular state have some classical gravity dual. So maybe in the case of holographic EOP, maybe we should only consider quantum state with classical gravity dual. So there are still also many other possibilities, more restrictive states. So we are not sure about this. So it's quite important to test this kind of condition against explicit calculation in CFP. So this is the reason we should explore some conformal QSA calculations. <coughs> but before that, I just want to mention there are also interesting generalization of March part type generalization done by Memo Kwan Jo uh, last uh, this year. So this is a kind of a combination of these three guys and take minimum of all possible purification but three part type purification. And then this has a nice geometrical meaning. You just take uh, this sum of these three surface area and take the minimum of all possible uh, location of these boundary points. And uh, that way we can also extend it much more, give it much more <coughs> general quantities. Okay, so now <coughs> I'd like to uh, come to uh, my final point of this issue. So can we get some uh, quantitative uh, confirmation or some evidence of this proposal? So what we only test against some inequalities, so we're not so sure how much this is precisely uh, correct and also related to the Hubbard kind of class of state we have to take a minimization. And uh, so for that, we use, some, we use some shortcut. It's not so easy to really take a minimum. So we replace minimization with some something called optimization. <coughs> so this is uh, something we call pass integral optimization, uh, worked, uh, with, uh, worked out with a uh, public factor, and yeah, I could do and Masamichi Miyake and Kenko uh, Atanabe last, uh, last year. And uh, for this, so let's focus on only 2D CFP. So, so, uh, so now, my, uh, before that, we, I just talked about the OP or entanglement of H cross section for any dimension, not the ADS CFP, but here now we focus on ADS3 CFP2. So consider two dimensional CFP defined on a flat space. Let's start with just the flat space and talk about quantum state which happens in Euclidean flat space quantum theory. And Z is a, you can actually also regard it as a Euclidean time, maybe minus star, Z equals minus star, just a, a, a definition. And the passing, what is a passing interval optimization? In, in some sense, we can say this is just a kind of special wire transformation. So if we talk about conformal theory, you have a wire invariance, it doesn't change the calculation. So if, this is a special wire transformation which satisfies two, co two properties. It preserves the quantum very functional, which we, we are interested in, especially the realize of the special type, final time, the Z correction. This is a Euclidean time correction. This is interesting some couple scale. Some, some uh, for C plus, I just put it in But you can see, see this is Z equal to zero. Some, some particular time, because we are talking about static space, and we are talking about, uh, uh, we are not interested in time dependent time. So we just pick some time, and we just reproduce correct to quantum wave functional, and at the same time, it minimizes uh, as integral complexity, some sort of complexity. There are many works on nowadays about holographic complexity, so how much the quantum state is complicated. But here we give some one definition of this, it just uh, from action function. But in there, this turns out the new reaction. So this is a minimization of the reaction. But I will explain this. So anyway, so the idea is wire transformation, so we just do wire transformation. So we have original pass integral, but we can't have wire transmission, we get the equivalent Lagrangian and so on. But the first thing, we should reproduce the same quantum state, original quantum state. So that means after the correction, at the end point of pass integration, we should get the same metric as this guy. This is very important condition. And uh, so we set the rule of UV cutoff. Here actually, it's shown UV cutoff, and UV cutoff here I mean the area of one lattice site of, we can imagine some discretization pass integral, and one lattice site occupies the area, epsilon square. 
So this is a definition, because it's an epsilon just like this, like this constant. So let's uh, follow that definition. And uh, so we are talking about some this discretized, regularized uh, path integration by this discretization. So then, so now we come to path integral complexity. So this is just defined by ratio of two wave functional. So after value transformation, assuming this condition, we should get the same quantum state. But uh, as we know, so normalization of wave functional uh, is not physically important, but that appears during the path integral process. We just, this side just path, integra path integration over some value transform metric. So this normalization depends on the, uh, this choice of value scale. So and this magnitude is just we call path integral complexity. So the state is the same. But uh, if we do the uh, extra computation, then you, you get some extra cost of computation. That is a, you, you get a multiple factor of path integration. So this is our uh, definition of path integral complexity. But fortunately, take a note of this, this is a function function. It's known that in 2D CFP, if we do some wireless scaling, the non-trivial change of measure is just come from this Liouville action, SA. So Liouville action is taken in this simple form. So this, in both 2D CFP, we can compute this explicitly. And this has a very nice property. It sees a central charge of 2D CFT. So in, in, in this sense, the clear claim is that we should, the second part is we just minimize uh, UV action. And indeed, if we take a, a simple setup, originally flat space, and with uh, optimization, we get, uh, for example, hyperbolic break. So this looks like time slice of the ADC. So yeah, originally I aim to understand some emergence of Angelus space from this is, this is of course, here is uh, a very large conjecture, but uh, in, oh, we confirmed that many examples, we end up with ADS geometry, which is, uh, is a support to dual to quantum state. But anyway, so forget about this information. We, we just use this as a sub technique. So anyway, we are interested in this particular value transformation. And we, so we can imagine some discretization of pass integral, and we cost grain. So finally, we should do some very fine grain path integral, otherwise we don't reproduce correct wave functional, but we can remove many details in the initial part of path integration, so we don't care because we have very large damping factor in path integration. So this much like case and network, like Mera and so on. So precise connection is not so clear at this point. But anyway, we get hyperbolic geometry. But good, so we hope this kind of thing is a com complex so this gives some most efficient algorithm to do as integration. And uh, as this complexity gets minimum, and we want to use this state. Then I'll come to this final point, this optimizing as density matrix. So far, I just do optimization of quantum state. This is optimization. But we can do the same thing for the density matrix. So especially, so let's think about simple setup. This again, we, we want to compute the EOP, so we have to have a region A and region B. And let's combine this and uh, regard A, B, the sum in single interval. This is a special setup. Then we can also separate it, but for simplicity, we first start with uh, combine uh, so setup where A, B is a single interval. And uh, we put cut, then as integration over this flat space gives row A, B. This is a standard definition of uh, Density matrix. This is all we will use when we compute the entanglement density and, and some filtering matrix. So this is just, and we optimize this path integration by previous similar way as we explained before. Just minimizing the reaction. And but before that, it is useful to do some conformal mapping. If we, it is useful to some kind of conformal mapping. And then, so we can map this single interval into this the boundary, this upper half frame. So this is mapped to upper half frame, A, B is here, and this one. And then, so we now, this is upper half frame, very easy to optimize this space. This is because the uh, same as previous setup, just passing integral across space. So we do this. So then, I'm uh, sorry. And then, uh, these are details, but after optimization, just minimizing, resolving the equation, we get this metric uh, right here, and compute the entanglement entropy. And uh, for this purification, we, we, we regard B tilde as a this part. This part is B tilde and A tilde here, but the location is not clear. So we can minimize also over locations. 
But anyway, obviously, this defines purification. Right? So all, if we cut A, B, B tilde, A tilde, this is just completely cut out as integral, so it's just pure scaling. Yes. And, yeah, and then we compute this, and we get this uh, simple expression. And, but also, we need to minimize this location of this, uh, which specifies the choice of A tilde and B tilde. And then we get the also simple result like this. And then finally, we can compare this with holographic calculation. So this is for holography. We have this region A and region B here. And, uh, so, and uh, this is the entanglement which is here. It's half circle. And uh, we just talk about minimum cross section, namely this red part, red line. And compute red, length of red line is very easy. And we get exactly the same result. So that way, we can confirm these two, uh, two guys, that we, this minimize ent entanglement entropy and this geodesic prepared, I mean, entanglement with cross-section. Now we can generalize this argument for double, double case and so on, and we get always matching whenever we can trust the computation. So these are basically all of my talk, and just summarize conclusion. So uh, we conjecture that gravity dual of entanglement purification is equal to minimum cross-section of entanglement to H. And our observation, so later we give some quantitative uh, observation that this, we can confirm this relation for assuming minimum percentile complexity is given this minimization. So we have some explicit examples. And there are many future problems. So we, well, besides, we should understand what class we really minimize IE to define program POP. And then, so some, yeah, this is just derivation program form, and still is still missing. And maybe also, at the same time, it's good to do some numerical calculation. So some, some part of this we are currently doing. And finally, there are many also interesting relations of this entanglement to question cross-section to some CFP quantities, like if we have and it might be interesting to think about the connection. Now, uh, connection and this other connection. Thank you very much. I think that is good.